So, um, and, and this can be a very quick one. It, uh, I, I put in the support materials, if people want to see in this, just the second re preparation for the second reading, which will happen August 6th. And so we've got those three policies, the non-discrimination, dual enrollment, and, ha and manifestation of hardship getting ready for second reading. And I think we're in pretty good shape there. Yep. Yep. The, I did put, and I think I, I want to, and it's, it's probably, it's a little too drafty, but it's, it's been busy. But I um, started to, I think I wouldn't, I'd call it an outline. Mm -hmm. and so I'd like, if you could look at the outline of the anti-discrimination plan and see what you think in just an outline thought. As in, are those the right topics we should then fill in under? Exactly, that's my goal for today. Um, and I actually like this, this work is, I like this work. And I like being a little bit, so I looked at a couple of other districts um, and so there's, I think there's the procedural stuff, and that's the notifications and applicable policies. And mm -hmm. Andrew, you would talk about connecting this to all the policies. So it looks like those, what people are, it makes sense. That's at the very bottom of mm -hmm. page two. And we can, yeah. and I'll collect all those and do all those. And then making all the perfunctory, important, but perfunctory uh, notices. And then it's kind of like, what do we want to actually engage in? And I, and I hope we can put in the, my, my vision for the plan is every two years, we mm -hmm. come back and look at it again. And we put that in the plan or put that in policy. Like the wellness policy is required every three years to review and a couple others that require periodic review. Um, and I think every couple of years we can even look at the data, but I think somehow developing a parent guardian survey and a student survey I really would like to get a group of people together at some point and take a deeper dive with Rubicon and with their work and talk with K through 12. What do we do? Um, yep. You know, or just what, what lessons do we do with this? You know, what events do we have? And then I would really like to do every other year or every couple of years to do a community engagement activity like a book read. And those three are very different than other policies or plans. Most are just very procedural, but if we engage the community, do a curriculum review, and engage our, our constituents, I think that's a pretty good plan. Have we ever em engaged the, fa maybe this part of curriculum review, but engage the faculty in their comfort with, you know, taking on these topics in the classroom and how we could help them be more comfortable if they're not? Yeah, I think that's a great, we've had, like, uh, we have a, our, our curriculum work is guided by a curriculum council mm -hmm. and the curriculum council is actually chaired by a teacher. It's Matt Krogman. It was chaired by Trish Walton and before that it was our library and we meet monthly and we've had some discussions in that small group about these topics and about comfortability but nothing set wide but I think you're right. I think, I think surveying the teachers should be added to this plan as well. Um, and maybe it's an audit, but it's also their comfort levels. Yeah. Right. I think, and, and there are a couple more policies that I think we could also add in here under included policies. Great. Um, I definitely think that our, I, I feel like we should rename this on the website too, the transgender policy. I think I'd probably yeah. rename that to non-discrimination, uh, you know, regarding, you know, gender identity instead yep. of just calling it transgender on the on the website so i think that could be one certainly that Thank could you. be included sure and then maybe and this is just a thought the behavior management and intervention because i know we talk in there about um you know this this gets sort of to what seth was just talking about um how it trained our our teachers on um on behavior management and intervention are we making sure that they are not that kind of implicit bias or bias is not coming into play when they are engaging in behavior management? Um, you mm -hmm. know, essentially not unintentionally um, 
harming, you know, black and brown children um, through their through their methodology, which is just, you know, yeah, sure. So those yeah, are just so a couple more that I noticed that could be included. I think, I think we, I think part of this will be a, also our professional development committee will have to look at this. Yeah. As well as, as that because you're, it's, it's, that's our training piece and our comfortability. That so the PD we have a PD committee mm -hmm. as well um, that we can make sure that this is on their their review cycle. Yeah, because I guess it's different. Like there's one piece is like how are we treating students, and then the other piece is how are we teaching students. You know, so you're right. you have the the behavior management piece, and then you have you know, what Seth was saying the what are we teaching and how are we doing that. It's a lot. I mean, it's this thing will be amazing when done, but it's a lot of pieces to pull together. But that's a good way to think about it. What you just said is, on the one hand, it's making sure we operate in a non-discriminatory way and, mm -hmm. and make sure that's true. But on the other hand, make sure we are engaging as a school and having people think constructively, creatively, and critically about these issues to make them good citizens, which is yeah. the second half. And I think, I think, Steve, you're right. Most places do the first half and don't think about the second half in either. And that's just teacher to teacher. If some teacher thinks it's important, they do it. And others, I think, probably don't. I don't well, know how, yeah. how in the last fall was a very different, even before COVID, right? I'm just talking about October, November was a very difficult time yeah. in the district. I don't know if you caught it, but it was a student management issue at the secondary level that went wildfire on Facebook. Yeah. Yep. And it was really, it was, it was one of the most uncomfortable times in my 20 plus years in Hoff, mm -hmm. uh, because it was a little bit of trial by Facebook. Yeah. It was no, not much assumed best intentions and it wasn't much tolerance. And, it, and, and that after that settled a little bit, we did a board meeting on student safety and we walked through how we do it, and it was pretty well received. We took some hits always about communication. Mm -hmm. uh, but then Liz and I had some discussions, and I contacted New Hampshire Listen. Um, that's the unit to, to facilitate some uncomfortable conversations about how, and I think it's expanded not just about behavior, but, but now, the, you know, in the, under this auspices of a plan. And I just, I, I think whether it's a book read or whether it's New Hampshire Listens, engaging the community in, in these conversations about how accepting we are, tolerant we are, understanding we are, in light of, there's no question, we have significant behavior in our schools. Mm -hmm. And also, how do we, you know, from Henry Lavoie's comments, right, how do we address all that as well? And so I don't know if it's a New Hampshire Listens or it's a book read. I just think about that. But I started the conversation through the family support team using them as the steering committee. And then of course we went into COVID <laughs> yeah. and that, you know, that uh, everything else got pushed ahead. But I, I like the New Hampshire Listens model where they bring everybody together and, and mm -hmm. kind of push honesty and discomfort. You know, let's mm -hmm. get everything on the table. But I don't know if that's, I don't know if you just think about that, but I, at the bare minimum, we've had real success at times with working with the library and Donna Dunlop and doing a poignant book read. Yeah, I think the only tricky part about a book read is that <clears throat> you just have to account for so many different levels of, of your reading ability and understanding comprehension. And I would want to make sure that it was accessible to, to everyone or, or to not ever to as many people as possible. I wonder if it could be more of a both and instead of an either or, you know, sure. which I know is a lot of, you know, I, I recognize it's a lot of work, but I also do think that there are probably folks who would be excited to take on some of that um, and help, help steer it. I don't know. I think it's also, I think it's broached into our budget discussions too. I think, yeah. don't you think it's, I mean, it's also not just this, but our country is, it's so divided right now. Yeah. Yep. Maybe we be right for him. <laughs> yeah, because all of this leads to civility and respect, and mm -hmm. we're seeing that play out in negative ways. Race, but uh, politics. Every you know, there's a 
there's been a breakdown in the country and I do think we, we've seen it break down in our town, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, so yes, talking about civility in all these ways can only be helpful. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I do think too that you bring like, so we have an anti-discrimination plan. One thing that might be helpful is if we were to think a little bit more about what that means, like what, what kind of anti-discrimination? What what are we trying not to discriminate against? Is this is this to be really holistic? Are we talking about mental health stigma and racism and um, you know gender identity, or or did we want to be more specific? I I would tend to go broader, more broad, and try to pull a lot of it in. Um, but that, that does mean more work, you know. But, but I think kind of what you were talking about, Steve, from last fall, that was definitely more along the lines of kind of a mental health stigma and a crisis response. Yeah. And also, again, a lack of intolerance. I thought from, you know, I'm a secondary school parent, so I certainly heard other parents, and I thought a significant amount of intolerance and, and lack of an attempt to understand, like, child having difficulties like this you know let's hang them from the you know it was, it was just overdone <laughs> and you know i would say that to people and i wouldn't really get a great response to that you know but i wasn't pleased with what i heard from the parents yeah uh, no. at all i think a lot of this yeah i mean and it comes from a place of fear you you know like i i, I think that when you are afraid it is so <laughs> as i kind of say like it's so easy just to go back to like your lizard brain, you know, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Um, so I, and I think a lot of people were um, kind of reverting to that. But I also think that's why a plan can be helpful because if you have a plan in place and you have something that you can point to and say, I hear you're freaking out, here's our plan, um, it can make people feel safer. And then hopefully we'll respond better. <laughs> If we really are thinking it as both a, you know, these are the things we don't do, but these are the positive things we do do, maybe we change the title of it. I mean, anti-discrimination is kind of the, you know, we follow all the rules. It's really, and I mean, this just, I haven't thought of the title, like equality, equal, equality encouragement. I mean, you know, I don't know what the right words are, but something that's more, says we're doing more than just making sure we follow the rules and we don't tolerate discrimination. Yeah, we don't. But we I think what we're talking about is this bigger idea of, you know, being a leader in, in, in making this one of the pillars of what we're teaching. Mm -hmm. Equality, civility and citizenship. Um, Ooh, there you go. Equality, civility and citizenship. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, it's how we do this in the lens of care. Right? Because yeah. we really do. I think it has to be in the Hopkins School District, all encompassing because we care about all kids. Right. And and so and I think that's that's the statement that and so and I think another piece and and Andrew said maybe you can this can be your your piece to work on it is the preamble. Yeah. You know the introduction to this policy based basically on both of what you've just said in the conversation, but I think. I think having a statement at the beginning about what is this plan and what's the goal of this plan and what's the, and then just have the plan. But I think, and I didn't see that on any others. The others were pretty, you know, as I said, perfunctory, you just put the stuff out, notice everything. But I think a preamble would be really important. Yeah. Uh, about what follows and what's the intent. Sure. I'm happy to work on that. That would be great even, not just fine. It'd be great. I love this kind of stuff. That would be great because that would be something positive and forward moving and not just yeah. <laughs> reactionary. Reactionary. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So why don't we work on that, P? I'll, I'll keep fleshing out the perfunctory stuff and I'll put some thoughts down. But if you guys can work on a, a preamble based on this mm -hmm. conversation that we can talk about in two weeks before yeah. round. And then... Um, by then, uh, so I think that's really our only to do is now to flesh out the plan until we get these policies. If that's all right, we'll stay focused on the plan and keep moving these three policies through. Yeah, that sounds good. 
So are we looking at the 6th then? Do we want to move that meeting to the 13th? It seems like you're going to have a lot of work um, between now and the 6th. Yeah, why don't we do the 13th? Is that? For the policy meeting, 9 o'clock on the 13th. Seth, does that work for you? Um, I will send you an email if it doesn't. I know I have a in-court hearing that day, but I don't know what time it's at. And my phone is out of juice, so I cannot tell you until I get to my office. That's okay. Yeah, but I think fine. I think <laughs> that is fine. We have a board meeting between just the policy stuff anyway, so we'll have yeah. a board meeting on the 6th. That'll be second reading. If there is any feedback, we hit it on the 13th and we bring it forward for our... Yeah. Does that work? Yep. That, that feels doable to me, for sure. I'll continue to flush it out. You guys are working the preamble. We'll bring it together on the 13th. Okay. It's amazing. I love it. Great. Is there anything else? I did have one, one other quick thing just for us to consider that came up the other day um, when I was doing the, the joint legislative committee is folks were sort of talking about if, if we want to think about or draft any COVID specific policy, some kind of policy that would sort of supersede other policies just in COVID times. I don't have deeper thoughts about this right now. Um, I just sort of wanted to put it on the radar and I'm happy to do more research into what that could look like and bring that as well on the 13th, if that works for you. Yeah, I think we'll know more once the plan or at least the draft of the plan is presented on the 6th, what policies yep. we make. You know, do we need a mass policy? Do right. we need any more HR policies? Um, yep. But we'll know more as the plan comes together. And uh, there's a Primex liability attended 12 today that I'm on. But yes, I, I think yeah. it is on in the radar. And once we present something to the community on the 6th, we may have more to go on. Okay. Yeah, I hope to hop on that Primex um, training as well. And I know Rob is also doing it. Great. So. We're all, we're going to be all covered in liability coverage. Yes, we are. <laughs> so it's good. All right. Nope. That's great. That was the only other thing that I wanted that I had thought about. Um, great. Thank so yeah. you both. And uh, we'll see you both tonight. And I'm yeah. going to come sign the contract right now. I'm here. Just uh, if I'm on the call, just wave. I'll let you in. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.